Hey y'all, it's CJ with Smoky Beginnings, and today's video is all about crafting mouth-watering brisket burgers on the pit barrel cooker. In this video, I'll show you how to pick out a brisket, how to grind a brisket, how to make your own beef brisket patties, and if you stick around long enough, I'll share a secret hack that turns your pit barrel cooker from a smoker into a grill. But before we get started, if you're new here and love backyard barbecue tutorials, make sure to like and subscribe. And for more delicious recipes, hop on over to our website, smokybeginnings.com. I've dropped the link in the description below. All right, folks, if you're ready, then I'm ready. Let's go. As we explore this topic, we have to start with talking about the brisket. See, we're not selling for ordinary ground beef here. Instead, we're grinding up brisket to achieve unparalleled flavor. But where does brisket come from? Brisket originates from the neck and the chest area of the cow. It is a piece of meat that consists of two major parts, the flat and the point. The flat tends to be lean, while the point boasts ample fat content. Now, let's discuss three perks of using brisket as ground beef. Firstly, when we blend the flat and the point together, we achieve an ideal 80-20 meat to fat ratio, resulting in exceptional flavor. Secondly, using brisket ensures that all the meat we grind comes from the same animal. Unlike store-bought ground beef, which often combines scraps from various cuts like steaks, stew meat, strips for fajitas, and tenderloins, not to mention the meat comes from multiple cows. Finally, buying a whole brisket can save you some cash. Currently, choice graded brisket goes for about $3.96 per pound, whereas an 80-20 blend of ground beef typically costs around $5.97 per pound. So not only do we get superior flavor and quality, but we also save some cash with very little minimal effort. And who doesn't love a good deal? I'll answer that one for you. Nobody. Now, let's talk about selecting the brisket. When selecting a brisket, ensure it has a generous amount of fat. Trust me, the fat is where all the flavor resides and we want plenty of it. Prime and select graded briskets generally boast more fat than choice graded ones. However, we prefer choice graded briskets for our ground beef because it's pretty much sacrilege to grind up a beautiful prime or select graded brisket. Another tip is, as you pick out your brisket, look for one that exhibits flexibility while still in the packaging. If the brisket is rigid and doesn't bend, it likely lacks sufficient fat content in the muscle fibers, which will lead to a dry and tough end result. Now, regardless of whether you purchase a whole brisket and trim it yourself or opt for a brisket flat from the store, the next step is crucial, which is cubing and grinding. If you have a grinder, perfect. If not, don't hesitate to ask your butcher for assistance. They can grind the meat for you, although be aware that some places may charge an additional fee for this service. Today, equipped with my grinder, I'm ready to prepare an eight and a half pound brisket for grinding. First, I'll trim away any loose or tough fat that won't grind properly. However, don't discard this fat because it's perfect for making your own beef tallow. Let me know in the comments if you would like a video on how to make your own beef tallow. Next, I'll slice the beef brisket into one inch strips before cubing them. With the meat cube, it's time to fire up the grinder. I received this grinder as a Christmas gift and it's a steal at around $30. You can find the link in the description below. This grinder easily attaches to the front of my trusty KitchenAid mixer and makes this whole process a whole lot easier. Now to ensure smooth grinding, I took precautions earlier by chilling the auger, grinding plates, and the blades in the freezer. Why did I do this? Well, during the grinding process, the grinder can heat up, increasing the risk of jamming. 
By pre-chilling the parts, it delays the grinder from heating up, reducing the likelihood of jams, and ensuring a seamless grinding process. Now, let's kick off the grinding process. Feed the cubes of the meat into the grinder. I'm not digging for one of the coarse grinding plates because it should give me the type of grind that I prefer. Keep in mind that since this brisket is over eight pounds, it'll take some time to grind all this meat thoroughly. After the initial grind, check out the fat content. If it's not at the desired ratio, add some of the fat trimmings we removed from earlier. Fortunately, this meat has the perfect fat content. Typically, I'd leave the grind as is, but this time, I'll demonstrate a second grind to emulate what happens at the grocery store when they advertise a freshly ground meat. Essentially, it means that they take an already ground meat and give it a second grind. Once the brisket is ground, it's time to shape those patties. I'm using a burger press to ensure uniformity. Seeing so you your ground beef with your preferred barbecue rub? Today I'm using Kinder's Buttery Burger Seasoning Blend, which complements the brisket fat with its rich buttery flavor. After seasoning, I'll allow the patties to chill in the refrigerator while I prepare the grill. Now if you stuck with me this far, it's time to demonstrate how I transform the pit barrel cooker from smoker into a grill. First, you're gonna grab two hooks, which are typically used for hanging your meat. Attach one hook to each end of the charcoal basket handle, ensuring they're evenly spaced. To ease maneuvering, I often rest one hook on the lip of the barrel while I insert a hanging rod. Then I'll place the first hook onto the hanging rod. Repeat the process with the second hanging rod and hook on the opposite side. Once lit coals are added to the basket, I'll place the grill grate directly on top of the hanging rods of the pit barrel cooker. We will now allow the pit barrel cooker to come up to temperature. While we're waiting for that to happen, I will fry up some bacon. Start by heating a frying pan over medium heat and add in bacon slices. Cook the bacon to your preferred level of crispiness, ensuring to save the bacon grease for later. After about 15 minutes, the pit barrel cooker has reached the desired temperature and it's time to place the burger patties onto the grill grates. Allow the brisket patties to cook for a few minutes per side. And here's a helpful tip. You know it's time to flip your burgers when you see the meat pulling away from the grate. My family prefers their burgers well done, so I'm gonna cook them for about three to four minutes per side However, we do not rely on time alone. Instead, we use a temperature probe to cook the patties to our desired level of doneness. These patties are nearly cooked to perfection, so it's time to add some cheese. I've got some slices of provolone and cheddar ready to go. Once the cheese has melted, it's time to remove the patties from the grill and let them rest. While the burgers are resting, let's toast some buns. Heat a pan over medium heat, Yes, it's the same pan that I used earlier to cook the bacon in. We'll toast the buns in the leftover bacon grease, but before we do, I'll spread a very thin layer of mayonnaise onto each bun. This will help the buns become nice and toasty. After about five minutes, it looks like the burgers have rested enough. Now, let's put together these delicious burgers. Start with your toasted bun, add a patty, then layer on your desired toppings, like lettuce, tomato, or perhaps just some crispy bacon. Don't forget to add condiments like mustard and ketchup. Place the bun lid on top, and there you have it. We created mouth-watering beef brisket burgers on the pit barrel cooker. If you enjoyed this content, remember to like and subscribe to the channel as it's the best way to show your support. If you really like this video, be sure to check out another one I recently made about smoking a brisket on the pit barrel cooker. It'll be one of the suggested videos at the end of this video. As always, don't forget to visit SmokyBeginnings.com for all my recipes. I left a link in the comments below. Until next time, keep those fires burning and those taste buds tingling. Have a good one.